before starting engine checklist. After the aircraft acceptance and pre-flight checklists are complete, the pilot is now ready to start the airplane. This checklist is used to ensure the crew is ready for the flight by reviewing the surrounding airspace, terrain and obstacles, airports of intended use, and emergencies or abnormalities that occur during takeoff or the flight. Note, while conducting a pre-flight inspection, the pilot must reference their checklists to confirm all items have been checked before starting the engine. At first, pilots will rely on the checklist to guide their check, but with experience, pilots begin doing the required pre-flight checklist line items and then verifying by reviewing the checklist. After the aircraft acceptance and pre-flight checklists are complete, the pilot is now ready to start the airplane. But before starting the engine, the pilot must brief the passengers and crew. To learn how to properly brief passengers, crew, and departure, please watch our video. Once the pilot briefs the passengers, crew, and departure, they ensure the seats and seat belts are secured, doors are closed and locked, the fuel selector is set to both tanks, the fuel shutoff valve is pushed in to allow the fuel to flow to the engine, the mixture is pulled to cut off, and the throttle is a quarter inch forward. To adjust the throttle a quarter inch, the pilot puts their index finger on the throttle rod and moves their finger back a quarter inch, then pushes the throttle in until their finger touches the base of the throttle. The avionics, alternator, and battery master switches are left off. The beacon light and all necessary navigation lights are turned on and the circuit breakers, located behind the left pilot's control wheel, are all in. If a circuit breaker is out, this may mean the circuit was overloaded. The pilot can push the circuit breaker in once, but if it pops out again, the pilot should not reset the circuit breaker again. If the circuit breaker is pushed in again or forced to stay in, there is a risk of electrical fire. The pilot should contact maintenance about this issue immediately. The pilot ensures that the parking brake is still set. Starting Engine Checklist Now the pilot is ready to start the aircraft's engine. The pilot must ensure that the propeller area is visually clear of obstructions and personnel. Then the standby battery is tested by moving and holding the three-way standby battery switch down to the test position for 10 seconds. A green light will turn on next to the switch. The pilot should look at the light and watch for any dimming or changes in the light. This can indicate an insufficiently charged standby battery or that something is not fully functioning within the battery itself. If the light remains a steady green, the pilot then pushes the standby battery switch to the arm position by pushing the three-way standby battery switch all the way up. This turns on the standby battery. The PFD should turn on. After the PFD is booted up, the pilot checks for any red X's on the engine indication system. To ensure all electrical circuits on the essential bus are functioning when the standby battery is on, the pilot checks the essential bus, or E-bus, voltage. The E-bus voltage should be a minimum of 24 volts. Now the pilot checks the main bus voltage. Since the main battery has not been turned on, the M-bus voltage should be less than 1.5 volts. The standby battery should indicate a discharge or negative voltage under the standby battery ammeter. After a few seconds, the standby battery enunciator will appear on the lower right corner of the PFD. Once the enunciator appears, the pilot can turn on both the alternator and battery master switches. After the alternator and battery master switches are turned on, the main battery bus, or M bus, should now indicate a minimum of 24 volts. Next, the pilot must determine if a cold or hot start is necessary based on the engine temperature. On Epic Flight Academy Cessna 172s, the pilot can click on the engine soft key on the PFD and look at the oil temperature. If it is below 100 degrees Fahrenheit, a cold start should be conducted. If the oil temperature is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the pilot should conduct a hot start. To conduct a cold start, the pilot advances the throttle halfway and turns the fuel pump on for 3 to 5 seconds while advancing the mixture to full rich, or all the way in, then back to cut off, and the fuel pump is turned off. The pilot then advances the throttle a quarter inch, announces loudly, clear prop, warning nearby individuals and confirming the prop is clear of obstructions. Next, the pilot turns the ignition to the start position and slowly advances the mixture until the engine starts. For a hot start, the pilot advances the throttle halfway, the mixture to cut off, turns the fuel pump on for one second, adjusts the throttle so that it is only a quarter inch, 
and advances the mixture a full third rich. The pilot then advances the throttle a quarter inch, announces loudly, clear prop, warning nearby individuals and confirming the prop is clear of obstructions. Next, the pilot turns the ignition to the start position and slowly advances the mixture until the engine starts. Once the engine is started, the pilot then adjusts the throttle so the engine produces 1,000 revolutions per minute, or RPMs, and confirms that the oil pressure is within the green area of the oil pressure indicator. Below the engine indications, the pilot confirms that the M and E bus voltage is a minimum of 27 volts, and the low voltage enunciator is off. The pilot then leans the engine for ground operations. To lean the engine, the pilot sets the throttle to 1200 RPMs, slowly twists the mixture knob counterclockwise until the RPMs increase slightly and then begin to fall. This is the leanest point the engine can run. The pilot then adds three clockwise twists to the mixture and the plane is leaned. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.